Hey, financial accounting students. I'm hoping that you are ready to move on to QuickBooks Setup Step 2. In this video, I'm going to show you how to import your chart of accounts, add account numbers, and input your beginning trial balance as a journal entry. Um, so I'm hoping that you've already followed all of the instructions for the setup. I'm going to start by just repeating um, one last step, which was to do a company purge. So I'm going to show that, and then we'll move on with importing our own chart of accounts. So I'm going to type in my browser after app, I'll put slash purge company and hit enter. And I've got all kinds of accounts in there, 147 of them that apparently QuickBooks Online set up for us that we didn't actually want. So in the bottom right, I'm going to type in yes and click OK. And then this next question, what type of business is this? I really wish they wouldn't even ask, but I'm just going to go and choose uh, just other accounting services is fine. It honestly really doesn't matter. It's this next selection that really matters. Create an empty chart of accounts. We really don't want QuickBooks Online setting up the accounts for us. We're going to do it on our own. So we want to wipe it as clean as we can. So I'm going to say create an empty chart of accounts and hit wipe data. It's going to think about it for just a moment. And now if I go to accounting, then chart of accounts, we'll see that we do still have a couple accounts. QuickBooks Online does require that you have a few accounts that must exist in the system. Um, we're not going to use any of their accounts. Okay, so instead, we're going to be importing our own chart of accounts. So that's what I'm going to do first. All right, so to do that, we're gonna go up to the settings wheel, and then we're gonna say import data. And what we're importing is the chart of accounts, so I'll click on that. And then you should have previously downloaded the Excel file for the chart of accounts, and now we need to browse and find that. So I'm gonna hit browse. And there's mine. I've got QuickBooks Online COA, which is Chart of Accounts, Chapter 7, Tile, et cetera. And I'll hit Open. And now I'm ready to hit Next in the bottom right corner. And here we're trying to map our fields. I've formatted that Excel file. As long as you didn't touch it, it should all match up just perfectly because I used their template. So all of this looks fine. We'll hit Next again. And then here's what it's importing, 14 accounts. All 14 of these accounts will be used in your project. They all have account numbers as well. And I'm pointing that out because as you're doing your project, the accounts that you should be using will be only the ones with account numbers. The existing accounts that were there automatically set up by QBO will not be used and they do not have account numbers. So then we'll hit import. And then hopefully you get this message, 14 of 14 accounts successfully imported. So let's go back again to our chart of accounts. So accounting, then chart of accounts. And now we have a bunch more accounts. Um, it's hard to tell though, which of these are our accounts versus the accounts that QBO set up for us. So that leads us to needing to turn on account numbers. So again, let's go up to the settings wheel in the top right. And then we're gonna go to account and settings under your company, account and settings. And then on the left menu, choose advanced. And then you'll see a chart of accounts and let's hit the pencil for the edit button on the right. And we wanna enable account numbers. So turn that switch on and then choose the checkbox for show account number. So we want both of those. Enable account number should be turned on in green and then click the check checkbox for show account numbers and then hit save. And then in the bottom right, you can choose done. So now it's refreshing. And when we see our chart of accounts now, we'll see 
all of our accounts have account numbers next to them. And the default accounts that QBO set up for us that we will not be using do not have account numbers. So that's all of our accounts. And as previously mentioned, all of the accounts that have account numbers should be used in your journal entries for the project. So the next thing we need to do is import the beginning balances. Well, let me rephrase that. We need to input the beginning balances, not import them. We're gonna make a journal entry that represents the beginning trial balance. So over here to the right, I have my document open that shows the beginning trial balance. Okay, so these are the balances in the accounts for tile, et cetera, as of 1231, 2019. So we're gonna need to input that so we have the beginning balances before we begin our transaction entries for 2020, which is when the problem is set. So to make that journal entry, we're gonna to go to the top left and click new. And then we're going to choose journal entry. So it opens the journal entry window. The first thing we need to do is enter the date. And you can highlight that field and type the date. And in QuickBooks, you can type dates just simply as six digits. You don't need any dots or dashes. You don't need to click through the calendar for two years. You can just type 123119 and then hit tab. And it converts that to the date 1231. 2019. The journal entry for this beginning balance, I'm just going to put BEG balance, which is an abbreviation for beginning balance. And that's how we know that it's our beginning balances as of 1231-19. It's not one of our regular transactions in the year 2020. In moving around in here, the tab key on your keyboard is your friend. So I'm going to hit tab to move down to the first line. And then in terms of the account number, shrink this down a little bit for the account title. Over to the right, you can see that beginning trial balance. So the first one is cash. And a couple of ways I can hit the drop down and I can see all of the accounts available. Or really I could just start typing cash. And sure enough, account 100 cash. And then I can tab over to the debit column and type in 195,000 and then tab. And I can just tab right on down to the next row. And then our next account is accounts receivable. So I'll type accounts receivable. And that's account 120, accounts receivable. And see, it automatically filled in 195,000 in the credit column. QuickBooks Online will not let you be out of balance, even for a moment, which is a good thing. But we need to be careful, because if we make a typo, it might fill in the wrong amount for us. Regardless, I don't want 195,000 in the credit column. What I want, according to my beginning trial balance, is 142,000 in the debit column. So I can just type that there and it'll wipe out that credit column for me. Again, I can tab down to the next row and our next account is allowance. So as we know, allowance for doubtful accounts is a contra asset, it's a sub account of accounts receivable in this case. It's an offset against accounts receivable. It's a contra asset, so it naturally carries a credit balance. So we input 26,500 in the credit column. And again, we tap down to the next row. Next, we have merchandise, inventory, and we'll key in 459,000. Tab to the next row and accounts payable, 112,000. Tap down again, common stock, 535,000. And then finally retained earnings. And it's automatically, plugging in 122,500 for me because that's what it needs to make the journal entry balance. I'm gonna key over it because I always do just out of habit to make sure the numbers are correct. If I had made a typo above in the journal entry, it would push a number onto the last row that may not be accurate. So I wanna double check. Yes, it is 122,500 and it appears that we're in balance and we've got everything accounted for. Um, a couple of things that I'm looking at, um, 
the 796,000 right here, obviously these two balanced, but I feel good that they balanced with this document with the beginning trial balance that was provided as part of the problem. So that helps. Um, so I just wanna review it real quick, make sure I have the correct date, the correct journal number, and then I'm gonna hit save. And then I'm gonna X out of this, which is bringing me back to my chart of accounts. Now I can see some numbers input in the balance column there. Um, I just wanna show you guys real quick, I can go over to reports and then I'll click on balance sheet. So we can see our balance sheet at 1231.19. If I scroll up, then I can change the date range. 1231.2019. And then I'll click run report. So here's our balance sheet at 1231.19. And it looks like it's got all those balances accounted for. Okay. All right. So We've got our chart of accounts imported. We added account numbers to it. And now we've entered in the journal entry for our beginning trial balance. And now you should be ready to actually do the work of the project. Um, I would recommend that you spend some time writing out your journal entries for the project. Um, there's 10 actual regular transactions, and then you've got two adjusting entries, which are 11A and 11B. To the extent that you're stuck on any of this, I would recommend that you refer back to your chapter seven homework where there's a very similar homework problem. It might be very useful. And of course, if you're stuck on anything, just ask for help. Um, that should do it for now. And then your next step will be to actually enter the journal entries for the assignment. All right, let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Thanks, you guys.